All right, everyone, welcome to my page. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever it is when you watch this video, just make it apply. My name is Rashad King, and I am an Orisha priest, crowned Oya. Uh, Chango is my daddy. Um, I'm also scratched in Palo Mayambe, working with the mighty Sarah Banda, who is a great shaman and warrior known for being able to break any curse. And I also practice hoodoo. Uh, remember, this is a general message, so only take what resonates. I should only be telling you things that your spiritual team should have already revealed to you. If they haven't revealed this to you yet, then of course it will not resonate. So go ahead and just ignore me and just take all of the other things that you learned from these videos. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, y'all, I'm hot, it won't be long. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to let it be long. But whoo, I hope this AC need to come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, let's see who, who we wanna call upon to make this AC. Come on, come on, Oya, got us a win. <laughs> Blow me a clue, cool breeze. <laughs> Oh man, let's get this done. You know, this uh, this reading is gonna, of course, talk about magic. You know, um, the Orishas have really been, you know, ancestors, spirit guides, you know, Orishas have really been giving me a lot of messages about magic. So many people is getting their ass kicked when it comes to magic because you guys are, well, I don't wanna say it in a bad way, but it's like you, you, you keep playing around with it that some of you, you know that it's present and you know that it's there, but you're not doing anything to get rid of it. And I know some of you are saying, well, you gotta keep in mind that my money is being affected too. And so I'm like, okay, I understand that money is being affected as well, but there's still things that we can do even with money affected. And I know most people will be like, well, what is it that you can do? You need to follow me and pay attention because I'm always putting out you know, little golden nuggets, you know, making sure that you're watching these videos from beginning to end to make sure you get as much information as possible and that you're also looking at my posts. You know, when uh, I, um, I directly started posting directly on YouTube so that I can leave messages for you guys letting you know what to what to do. I know today when um, I was cleansing the house, because today is Sunday, Saturday we clean the house. We clean up everything upstairs and downstairs. And then on Sunday we follow up with cleansing. So we burn our herbs, our spices and stuff like that. We change all of the water on the altars. We put a candle on all of the altars, which I have to do. And then, um, you know, so it, it recharged the house bringing in new energy. Don't you realize that if you keep that process up alone, even when somebody is doing witchcraft, it can come back to witchcraft. It can remove that and stop it from coming in. But some of us, we're not keeping up with our practice. We don't run to the ancestors in the Orishas only when something is wrong. And then every single time they fix everything, we leave them alone. And it's like, okay, I'm done studying about you. I'm done, you know, honoring and acknowledging you. It's time for me to go back to whatever it was I was doing. It's like, no, that's why so much negative stuff is happening and keep happening. We cannot prostitute our ancestors and our Orishas only because we need something. The whole purpose of this thing is to build and foster relationships. And we need to make sure that we're building and fostering those relationships. One thing that you're going to notice today is uh, on, on this reading is um, with the paint to key. I love um, this paint to key that Oya says something very specific that I that I loved. Um, let me see. Um, I, I love this part, which you'll hear it pretty soon when I go over to paint, uh, paint a key. It says, you have been cursed by a malicious sorcerer. Um, this dark magic must be removed or it will continue bringing you suffering and destruction. Whenever we allow magic to just stay in our lives, it destroys everything. You know, uh, let me walk you through the process again. You have a cleanse. Cleansings is good 
to keeping negative energy at bay. And so a cleansing is before negative energy come to you, you're cleansing your house every single day and it's hard for magic to come in. And so when you are cl um, cleansing your home, it's even harder for somebody to try to attack you. Cleansing, uh, but I still recommend getting a cleanse from a priest every single month because us as people that's um, in the religion, whether you're initiated or not initiated, you know, whether you're in the religion or want to get in the religion, every single month you should be getting a reading by a priest. You should be um, receiving a cleansing every month by a priest, and you should be receiving Ebo by a priest. A reading, everybody charged differently for a reading. You know, mine are um, $85 for a 30 minute reading. You have um, cleansing, which is normally around like $200. You have Ebo. Cleansings is keeping negative energy at bay. Ebo is a ceremonial offering to the Orishas. There are specific things that it's a full blown ceremony, but it's a ceremony that's an offering. And so as long as you do those three things, you keep your path clear, you keep doors open, you you know, you get what you you get the harvest in every season. You're always the head, never the tail. You're always bringing in blessings, never curses. Whenever you follow that, but see majority of us we break off from our spiritual practices so much that it's so easy for people to come in and wreak all types of havoc in our lives with magic because we have no discipline. I can tell you this. I don't care what religion you follow. A disciplined person in their religion, it is hard to curse them. It is it's hard. You know, you don't see too many people talking about that they cursed a Muslim. Because whether you believe in the religion or not, they're very disciplined in their religion. They're praying like eight times a day. You know, it's, it's very hard for them. You know, but majority of the time when you hear people talk about being cursed and the devils and demons and stuff like that, it's Christians. Christians are never faithful in their religion. You know, you have some that are, but you have a lot of them that go around with a very nonchalant energy where it's just like, oh, Jesus got me. I just plead the blood of Jesus and that's all I have to do. The only time they open their Bibles is when they are actually going to a Sunday church service. And even then, they're not fully paying attention. And even then, sometimes they still don't open their Bible. They just proceed to trust every word that comes out of the pastor's mouth. You know, you have where half of the time they don't even go to a um, Wednesday night Bible study to even learn more in depth about the Bible. You know, and so outside of the church, it's kind of rare for some of them to pray. It's rare for some of them to fast. They have no religious structure of what to do, like burning incense and stuff like that. And so normally nine times out of 10, it's very easy to attack your typical Christian because they have no uh, protection. And All right, in their mind, they're thinking that as long as they plead the blood of Jesus, that everything is just gonna be okay. And it's like, well, that's not how this thing works. And so majority of the time, that's why they are the easiest to be cursed. And so whenever you allow that magic to come in, that's when you're on that area of a ritual. When magic come in, you will start seeing things in your house breaking apart. You will start seeing flowers dying. You will start seeing that, you know, your children are being very rebellious. There's a lot of things that comes when a curse hits, your money start um, dwindling away, your um, your love life start being attacked, that you start being in more fights and more arguments. You know, there's a lot of things, but a, a ritual can easily break that up and send that energy back. But see, I think where everybody is getting frustrated is that they skip those two. They skip the cleansings, they skip the rituals, 
and then they wait until uh, uh, magic has taken root. And once magic has taken root, the only thing they can get rid of it is a ceremony. And that's when people are like, you know, oh no, I don't know what to do. Because normally at the stage when you need a ceremony, your money is not dwindling, it is depleted. You have nothing. Your love life is not a challenge that you're fighting and arguing. You have no love life. You start seeing scratches and bumps on the body. You start seeing a lot of things when it hit the ceremony um, area. And that's why it is important to start recognizing these signs sooner and doing something about it immediately and not waiting for this thing to you know, get to this type of level. And so normally when it gets to when it gets to this level and you need that ceremony, you have two more steps that it goes. You have that um, eventually it will become a stronghold. And the moment that it becomes a stronghold, that's when um, you will end up risking being full blown possessed. You know, um, stronghold and possessions are the last two that magic um, take. And possession is not always what you see like um, needing an exorcist where the person is going crazy. Ah, that's not always possession. Sometimes like if someone did a love ritual, possession is you're so in love with that person that that person did magic to call you back. And now you're so in love with this person that you're buying them gifts, taking them on shopping sprees, paying their mortgage. They have you working two to three jobs. All of that is possession. And it's because you never broke that curse. And now it's like you're a slave in a relationship instead of being a partner. It's like that person can do nothing wrong in order for you to walk away. It's even more powerful than a binding spell. So what I really wanna talk about is getting into the reality of magic. The first thing I wanna say is that I hear a lot of people tell me, you know, oh, I went to this person, oh, I went to that person, oh, I went to this person and nothing happened. First thing I wanna say is let's get into a, a, a really good, positive, professional reality check. When you have allowed magic to stay on you for so long, I don't care who it is, it can be Harry Potter himself. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> It sometimes may take four, five ceremonies, two or eight rituals. It really depends on the level of magic in your life. You, we, we can't expect for something that has been on us for eight years, eating away at us for eight years is going to disappear just like that because somebody did one ceremony. And that's why I tell everybody all the time that once the work is done, you should automatically be setting up another reading a week after that to see what's in your energy. If your energy is clear, there's nothing else that you need to do. But if your energy still have magic, you may have to do another ceremony. You may have to do a ritual. You may have to do a cleansing. You really need to follow the instructions of that spiritualist. I know sometimes we think, oh, this person is just, you know, using me for money and stuff like that. Well, that's why before you even go to that person, you should have been consulting with your spiritual team, asking your spiritual team, did you bring this person in my life? You know, did you bring this priest in order to help me? And if your spiritual team is saying yes, that this is the person that's going to help you get out of it then listen to the instructions that they are giving you. And so that's just the reality check I wanna give is that don't expect for something that has been in your life for eight, 10 years to just be wiped away with one ceremony. You know, breaking magic from your life, not only is it an investment into yourself, but it's also a full spiritual warfare. And this is the thing that I love that your Oya said in the second part of this thing that I really love. She said, um, I will help you, but you must be prepared to face the challenges that comes with breaking this curse. And it's like, what do you mean by that, Oya? What do you mean by you must be prepared to face the challenges that comes with breaking this curse? When some when you break that curse from out of your life, 
the person that put the energy on you will instantly know because sometimes nine times out of 10, that energy will go back to sender. They will feel that energy breaking. And sometimes they will say, oh, you think you can break this curse? I'm going to reinforce it, which means not only am I going to send this magic back, but I'm going to do an even more powerful spell that you will not be able to break. And so whenever you're in that mindset of finally being able to break a curse, you must be in the mindset of a warrior. You must be prepared and ready to fight on that battlefield and to truly do the things that you need to do in order to break this curse. This is not something you can play around with that you think that you can just get on the battlefield, wave a sword just like this and then it's done. Sometimes it takes more. Some of you have gotten to the point that you are getting physical manifestations of the magic taking over your life. When you have physical manifestations of scratches, cancer, sickness, disease, illness, worms, all of this other stuff that is taken over, baby, that's a ceremony in and of itself. You don't even have to do divination for that. When you have allowed it to get to that point, that's what it takes. It takes more. And so how do we get to this point? I had one of my clients that asked me a good question and they were like, if I never been around this person or if I haven't been around this person for a while, how is it that they can put physical manifestations into my bodies like I'm getting, you know, um, worms in my stomach? How is that possible? Easy and simple. When someone is doing magic on you, number one, you do not have to be present for somebody to do magic on you. They do not have to have access to your essence in order for them to do magic on you. Somebody can print your picture off of Instagram, Facebook, and do all types of shit. Somebody can get your business card and do all types of stuff. Somebody can have your address and do all types of stuff. They don't have to have you present. It's the same way when a curse is broken. You do not have to be present all the time in order for that curse to be broken. And so, I, the one thing I want you to understand about magic that is very key, magic cannot make something appear out of nowhere. It can't make something just appear out of thin air that, oh, you did a money spell. The next thing you know, money just fell down from the sky. That's not how magic works. Magic is just the manipulation of energy and something must be present in order for energy to be manipulated in order for energy to be able to be controlled. And so in a case where there's physical manifestation that is messing up your beauty and things like that, it's not like the person is coming and putting acid or something like that in your beauty supply. You know, what is being done is a projection where let's say that you're you're already eating unhealthy that magic is going to make you eat unhealthy even more and so now you went from having fast food for one meal to now having fast food for every last one of your meals that you're eating fast food for breakfast lunch and dinner that alone is working on your beauty <laughs> That alone is affecting your beauty. And see, now not only that, you know that when you eat certain foods, you get heartburn. Now you keep eating these things that's getting you heartburn. Now your stomach is being messed up. Now you feel you're, it's, it's a toxic that is building up in your body. And now because you have had this for such a long period of time, now all of a sudden you have cancer. Now all of a sudden you have thyroid problems. Now all of a sudden you have this and that because something that started with heartburn, it elevated into everything else. So magic just didn't make this thing appear out of nowhere. It manipulated what was already there. So majority of the time, even though it was the other person that cast the spell, it was you were the one that gave power to it. And so people always say, well, why is this happening to me? Because in order for magic to affect me, don't I have to agree to it? That is a rule, that is a law. You agree to it the moment you were keep eating that unhealthy food that you knew before this magic came that you should have never been eating in the first place. And so majority of the time you notice that the magic, when people see magic into our lives, the thing that it affect 
It's the thing that our ancestors and spirit guides were already talking to us and leading us to get rid of. And we were so hard headed and didn't want to listen that we allowed this thing to continue happening. Like some of us, we got some of the, wor the worst attitudes, stinking as hell, just going off on people, yelling and, you know, bringing people down and belittling someone. And it's like, even though that's you, some people have accepted that and they like, oh, you know, that's just so-and-so. Let's just not say anything about it. Let's keep quiet because we don't want this person to blow up. When magic is being done on you and people are trying to affect your relationship, that husband or that wife that was so prone to dealing with your abuse, now they're saying, fuck this. Uh, I'm not going to do this no more. You're not going to talk to me any type of way. Now, all of a sudden, they got the courage to stand up to you because it didn't make you into a worse person. It Well, it, it didn't make you this. It didn't make you this the person you are. It just made the person you are even worse. And so now instead of going off on these people one time a day, it went from one time to 10 times. Magic is just the manipulation of energy. And so the magic will make you even more frustrated that you're blowing up at people even more because every single time you get mad at someone, you blow up and you take that out on everybody around. And so that's all you're feeling. You're feeling the strong effects of that magic, that that magic can only make it increased. Last example, and then we'll move on. Let's say in the case of um, money, everybody is like, oh, I don't have no money. It dwindled my money. It dwindled my money. It dwindled my money. It took away my money. Well, you already had money management problems before the magic came in. You were buying things instead of paying your rent and paying your mortgage. You were keep going out to the club every single day. You were over drinking. You were always spending your money on weed. You were, and so it's like before the magic came, you were already doing these things. You know, you were already living from paycheck to paycheck. And every single time when spirit told you to, re -up, to apply for jobs so that you can get something better, you neglected that voice and purposely did not and so now when that magic came, it manipulated what was already there. The person that was living from paycheck to paycheck, now instead of living from paycheck to paycheck, you're living in a negative because something occurred in your life where now you're the negative in this month and it's trickling down to every other month where now it has depleted all of your funds. For the person that overspends and overshop and have no discipline when it comes to their money, when the magic came, it made you overspend. It was like, girl, come on, let's get up and go to the mall and let's just shop around. Let's just go get some stuff because we're feeling depressed and you just spent your mortgage. And so it did not, you know, even though the person started this and they sent the magic, it was you who gave power to it. And so those are the things that I kind of want you to just understand is that you'll be surprised how much you can control this magic. Now, even though it's destroying everything in your life, you'll be surprised how it can destroy everything. Let me give you an example of love. So let's say you have someone doing powerful magic in order to bring somebody back to them because they just can't get over this person. When they're doing this magic, it destroys everything in their life. It destroys those friendships. And so, you know, once again, remember, keep in mind, magic cannot make something appear out of nowhere. It just manipulate what was already there. And so if it's manipulating what was already there, those friends were already jealous of you. Those friends were already envious of you. Those friends already thought you were uh, um, annoying. Those friends already thought that you were a show off. Those friends already thought that you shouldn't even be in my goddamn circle. So when this magic came, it already enhanced what was already there. And now what was always said below the breath is now being said and it now is being said in a level, at a, at a volume that you understand it and you like, damn, 
you know, this this witch is making these people, you know, hate me. Well, no, technically they already hated you before the magic, but yes, the magic is bringing out what was already present. And so, you know, that's just like, you know, if you had a partner that cheated, you that cheats on you all the time, the magic did not make him cheat, but the magic did increase the amount of people that he was cheating on you with that it did open a door now that not only is he sleeping with the neighbor, but he's also sleeping with your best friend and your mom. You know, so that the magic just opened the door, but it was his behavior that had no self-control that did that and brought you that harm. Magic can only manipulate what's there. When the magic come, let's just say, when the magic flies in, it looks for that door. It looks for that door that it can go into. And it's like, Oh, y'all argue every single day. Huh, let me throw this in the mixture. And so now you're arguing even more and it's even more intense and now you're breaking up. And so the magic looks for an area that it can come in and affect you in the worst way possible. But if you have nowhere for that magic to land, then that magic is not gonna be effective at all. So, when someone is doing magic to bring you back, you will notice that everything in your life, like, it's like, why can I not keep a person in my life? People come in saying they want relationships and stuff like that. You go out on dates, you have a good time, you end up having sex with the person and then boom, the person leave. And in your mind, you're thinking, oh, this person only wanted sex. If that was the only person, fine, that's a safe assumption. But when this has happened to everybody and even leaving you without even having sex with you, this is magic. And the whole purpose of magic is... And so the whole purpose of magic is to suppress you so much that you eventually give in, that you eventually just give in and say, you know what, I'm just gonna be lonely. I'm just gonna be by myself. And then it will attack you and start making you, next thing you know, now all of a sudden you're horny. Now all of a sudden you desire, you're very, you know, um, lustful, wanting to be with people on a sexual level, but you have the desire, but you're not getting the outlet in order to release that energy. The person do a lot of stuff, the magic will do a lot of stuff to fuck with your mind, to drive you insane, to tire you and drain you out so that when they come back, you will see them as the only option. You will say, okay, well shit, I haven't gotten anything else. I might as well go on and give this a try. Exactly, that's what this whole thing was about. It was to tire you out and that's when it comes full blown possession. But what you gotta understand is listen, some people are extremely hard headed. Some people, they'll say, oh fuck that shit. I'd rather be homeless on the street starving then to get back with you, and that's exactly what happened. Did the magic work? Yes, the magic worked because it's fucking up everything in their life, and it made them lose everything, but it's just even with the present of being lost with everything, losing everything, they still didn't want your ass. <laughs> like, they said, nigga, I'm still choosing to live under this bridge than to go back with you. Remember, magic can only manipulate what is already there. And so you're manipulating the energy in this person's life by closing doors and destroying everything, but you can't manipulate an emotion that is not there. If that person has completely fallen out of love with you and that love to have turned into hate, that they hate your fucking guts, no matter what magic spell you put on them, they are never coming back to you. They are always gonna have a hatred for you because that is the thing that is in their hearts of hearts. You cannot manipulate love that is not present. And so the only thing you're doing is destroying someone's life that will never love you, that will never come back to you, that this person is ready, willing, and able to be homeless under a bridge, starving for eight days straight, than to come back to you who have a home, food, and water. That's some powerful shit. Like you really, you really fucked up when somebody is in that mindset. So it proves to you that magic cannot always go into that level of possession. 
the only way that that can happen is that person would have to have a love for you. And that's why you will notice majority of the time when someone get ready to put a love spell on you, they will try to come back and talk to you and be like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, do you forgive me? You know, we don't have to get back together, but do you at least forgive me? Like, you know, you know, we did love each other and stuff. They're purposely trying to condition your mind so that even if you say no in your mind, you're, st you're still like, oh, well, you know, that person wasn't that bad. You know, we did have, you know, some good memories. And then as you reflect on those memories, of what you used to be with that person, you now gave that person an entrance in to do magic that they can get you back because now you purposely talk to them to implant that feeling of love again. And now since that seed is planted, you do have something to manipulate. So I know it was a long drawn out, you know, um, thing, but I really want to go over magic so that you people can un so that everyone can understand you people people you people uh, you people <laughs> who you talking about you people <laughs> wrong word choice <laughs> Woo, wrong word choice <laughs> but uh you people <laughs> but no but for real um it is um oh this wind is blowing but it's, it's, you know, it's very important to understand magic and how magic works because, you know, it's like when you know that someone is doing magic on you to attack your health, why are you still eating unhealthy? When you know someone is doing magic to, you know, attack your finances, why are you still overspending? When you know someone is doing magic in order to attack your love life, why haven't you still fixed your fucked up attitude? Like there's things that we need to learn because they're only manipulating what is already present. Let's get into this painter key. All right, so this painter key is about Oya in the Kirch village. Oya, the Orisha of wind, storm, and transformation, was known for her fierce and protective nature. She wielded Amir's powers and had the ability to sweep away negativity and bring about necessary change. There was a village that people lived in peace and prosperity. However, their tranquility was disrupted when a jealous sorcerer cast a powerful curse on the village. The sorcerer angered by personal grievance, used his dark magic to bring misfortune and suffering upon the village. Soon after the curse was cast, the village experienced series of calamities. Crops withered, livestock fell ill, and mystery sickness spread among the people. Despite their efforts to find a solution, the villagers could not determine the cause of their woes. Fear and despair gripped the community as they struggled to survive. The village elders decided to seek help from the Orishas. They made a shrine to Oya, hoping that she would have the power to lift the curse and restore their village to its former state. Oya, moved by the villagers' plea, appeared before them. Oya said, you have been cursed by a malicious sorcerer. This dark magic must be removed or it will continue to bring suffering and destruction. I will help you, but you must prepare to face the challenges that comes with breaking this curse. Oya instructed the villagers to gather specific herbs, perform a cleansing ritual, and make offerings to appease the spirits. She also warned them that the sorcerer would try to resist their efforts and that they must uh, remain strong and united. The villagers follow all of Oya's instructions. They performed the cleansing rituals and burned the herbs and made the offerings and instructed. And as soon as they did, Oya summoned her mighty winds to sweep through the village, removing all dark magic and purifying the land. The sorcerer, realizing that his curse had been broken, attempted to reinforce it with even more dark magic. However, Oya's power was too great. She confronted the sorcerer and with a fierce storm neutralized his manic magic and banished him from the village. 
All right, y'all, let's get into these cards. Oh, dang, somebody's starting off with the tower moment. Ooh, somebody is going through a lot. Um, anything that can go wrong is going wrong right now. That's too many cards. Anything that can go wrong is going wrong. I try to tell. Yeah, some some of y'all gotta be ready to fight and get this magic up off of you. Oh, somebody is doing this because of wish fulfillment. They know something is getting ready to come in for you. Oh, and they're putting you in self-doubt. This tower moment is attacking you from the inside. Self-doubt, lack of self, that somebody is not trusting themselves. That some somebody like you going through so much stuff, you don't even trust your inner voice anymore because you're saying you can't determine the difference between your inner voice, which is Ashe, Holy Spirit, and you um, between the other voices. And so now because of that, you're shutting everything out. You know, um, you, you, you can't tell the difference between your intuition and, you know, um, an illusion because somebody has had you under a spell for so long, you can't even tell the difference right now. So that's what this is. So this tower moment, somebody is somebody is doing like a great self-sabotage that they're sabotaging themselves greatly there. You could be walking away from people that's supposed to be in your life, um, not trusting people, you know, oh, they, everybody out to get me. Everybody out to get me. Everybody out to get me. <laughs> Just going crazy. You know, um, and this is all magic. You're, you're, this person is having you to make yourself destruct yourself. That you're, dig you're digging a grave for yourself. Man. All right, so this person got you completely isolated and alone and by yourself. Ten of swords. Damn. Ten of swords is a, um, this is the crowning energy. Ten of swords. Yep. This person is about to have you completely just feeling like the whole world is against you. Lost opportunities. Yep. I'm, I'm, I love when I just be talking and everything come out. Everything like, yep. Lost opportunities. This, this person is making you. Well, this, this person did the magic, but they're making you do the work. You're doing the work. So there, there was already a level of paranoia in you from the beginning. It's just even worse now. You know, majority of the time when magic come in, it always attacked the thing that she, we should have never had in us in the beginning. You know, it's like, why? Why have you not dealt with those trust issues? You know, peop, you should automatically trust people until they show you they can't be trusted. And... When I say trust people, I'm not saying meet a stranger, give them the keys to your house and car and stuff like that, but give them the basic trust until they prove to you that they can't be trusted. Because now since you didn't master this trust issue, you're going very, you're very paranoid. And, oh my God, you see the way he did that? He out to get me. He out to get me. You know, and that's the, one of the signs of being possessed is that you typically end up going crazy first. You typically end up going crazy first. You end up going into this level of insane, and then that's when you end up being fully possessed. Insane look like possession. Possession look like insane. You know, uh, I got the one of the uh, one of the shows said that uh, it's the show I'm watching now where it's just like you know he was like, oh, this is why I need your help. He was talking to a psychiatrist because he was like, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between you know. Uh, paranoia um um insanity and being possessed because he was like you know they look the same you know insane look like possession and possession look like insane and that is so true you know and you know a lot of times people will do these things to fuck with your mind and it's so that you can come to this place of being so exhausted that you're so drained that you get into like this zombie mindset. And once you get there, that's when, you know, schizophrenic come in, bipolar, you know, um, and, you know, sometimes people, you know, that's how they want you in relationships. They want you beat up, beat up and destroyed that now they can come in and control and manipulate you in whichever way they see fit. 
I don't understand it, but uh, people will be people will be people. People will be people. Intimacy. So this person is blocking um, your your connections, uh, releasing, saying that you need to let go. It's the three of swords is saying there's already you already let go. Or no, somebody is still holding on to something though. These are too many. You're still trying to hold on to a you're still trying to hold on to a to a love connection. And it could be because of magic. Um longing. But it's like you know, this is someone holding on to a relationship. Um, this is somebody that likes a defeated partner. They want you defeated and weak. They don't want you with no power, no, no energy. It's like, you know, I, 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 I got you as a footstool. I want you to stay as one. <laughs> the overall energy is the tower card. The tower card is all about abrupt change, you know? And so it's like, there's a lot of fires that's going off right now. There's a lot of abrupt changes because I mean, well, at the end of the day, you're just, it, it, it's, it's a lot of things going on and it's because a wish is getting ready to be fulfilled whether that wish is leaving finding the right person but it's like your your self-doubt it's, it's a lot of self-doubt there's a lot of oh i don't know if this is going to happen i don't know if this is going to manifest i don't know if you know uh, uh i can leave especially if this is a marriage you could be fighting yourself on a religious standpoint of oh we're not supposed to get a divorce but it has something to do with um intimacy with um with, with bonding um with with this connection that this is a relationship that needs to end because um what a wish fulfilled is saying that maybe there's somebody else out there that's getting ready to come in but you can't be with this person if you're already with somebody and this relationship is not serving your highest good you have the um three of swords the Three of Swords, it talks about the ending of a connection. It talks about the ending of a relationship. And you have the Five of Pentacles of losing everything. And so it's like this relationship has already lost its flavor. It has already lost its season. It has already lost its salt. And it's like, what what is the purpose of this thing continuing? At this point, this is just a toxic ass relationship that is giving no energy at all that at this point you guys you're, you guys are not even having sex or anything it's just two people that's miserable in a relationship cut it out but even at the end of the day you're still trying to maintain control with the seven of wands and it's saying you're trying to maintain control of your home life which is the four of wands and the emotion card is saying that you need to release and you need to let this thing go it's release it. It's not serving your highest good. You know, normally with energy like this, the reason why you're still holding on, you could be under a binding spell that this, this person could bind you. And this is how binding spells typically work, that you bind this person. And then, you know, now when the relationship is done and over and, you know, people need to move on and find the person that they were destined to be with, they can't move on because they're locked. A binding spell is like a rat that's in a cage. And that rat is keep trying to find a way out. Like, how do I get out of this? Not realizing that they're in a cage and they can't go nowhere. And typically in these type of scenarios, that's when we see on the news, you know, oh, man shot wife, you know, or woman stabbed man. Because typically the person end up going so crazy that they end up doing something extreme in order to get out because when they finally, when their eyes are finally open and they realize that they're in a cage, it always end up with the crazy extremes. Be careful of binding spells. Stop binding people to you. And some of the times we bind people to us because of the most selfish reasons possible. It's like, oh, this person got money and I want their money. Let me bind them to them. You know, let me bind this person to me. But keep in mind, a binding spell is not a loving uh, is not a love spell. A love spell is to make the person love you is manipulating what is already there. The person must love you in order for you to be able to successfully strengthen that. 
But a binding spell is just to keep the person around. It's just the, the bind. A binding spell, the person can still cheat. They'll just always bounce back to you. A binding spell, the person can fuck everybody on the block and just bounce back to you. A binding spell is just that. It just keeps, it's like a boomerang. It keeps that person around you. Even when they go, they come back. You know, so a binding spell is not a love spell. Love spell and binding spells are two completely different things, just to throw that out there. You have the uh, Ten of Swords. Um, look, y'all have been stabbed in the back so many times. This is an unhealthy relationship. This is, this is somebody that is in a relationship that is extremely unhealthy and they can't leave because they're bound. That's what this is. That's what this is. This is a unhealthy relationship. And the person that bound them is in love with the other person, but the other person is not in love at all. And that's why the tower moment is here, because this person is trying to escape. This person is trying to escape. They're breaking down walls, doors, and everything, and they're trying to escape, and they can't understand why they can't escape. But a wish has been fulfilled with the nine of cups here. So that means God led you to somebody, the ancestors led you to somebody to like break this curse, but you didn't. And it's because of self-doubt with the judgment card in reverse that you could have been like, oh no, I'm a Christian and we don't participate in witchcraft. Okay, well keep calling on the blood of Jesus and stay in this toxic ass relationship with somebody doing witchcraft on you and binding it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, what else can you say? Because this person want intimacy, that they're holding you in this, ca um, in this castle hostage because they want intimacy, but you don't. You're ready to let this thing go. You're trying to release this thing, but this person wants you. And that's why you have the Three of Swords here. The Three of Swords is saying there's gonna be an ending because it's nothing left in this relationship. It is empty, it is depleted. It is nothing else. Nothing else been, can be given from here, but yet somebody is still trying to maintain control to keep this home life when spirit is saying release it. And so there have been so many things on both sides that both of you could be feeling the energy of the 10 of swords that you're hurting each other because this relationship is toxic as hell, but you have the ace of pentacles in reverse lost opportunities. You could have missed a lot of opportunities because of this relationship. Because of this relationship, you could have missed a lot of opportunities. And the opportunities doesn't always mean somebody else coming in. You have longing that, you know, the one person in this connection is in love. And they're longing for you. They're longing for you and they want intimacy. And this person is willing to bring you pain and everything else in order to get what they want. Not being concerned about your feelings because you're ready to go, but you can't go because you're bound. Whew. You have in the um, in the challenge position. You have the hierophant. The hierophant is all about traditions. You and that's why this somebody in this relationship is religious. That this could be a marriage. This could be a marriage, and they are like, no. You know, when we are when we are together, like we can't get a divorce. You know, or if this is not even y'all, if y'all not married, this person is just very traditional where they like, look, I told you if I give it up to you, you ain't never leaving. And you probably thought this was a joke, but I really meant what I said. If you get in this, you ain't leaving. And this person making sure this is their last stance, that they're standing their ground and making sure that they keep you in this relationship even though this person is disappointed because this person, they love you, but they're disappointed in you. They, you could have, I mean, I don't know, but this person is disappointed. This person is like, they don't even fuck with, they don't even like you on that level, but they're holding on to this love. And you have the five of swords, which saying there's gonna be continuous ar arguments and fights. And eventually there's gonna end up being the ace of swords. There's gonna end up being a huge, fight between you two and the the emotion card is chemistry 
that these emotions is the person that don't want to let go of the relationship. They're longing for you. They have chemistry. They have intimacy for you. Even though they're disappointed in some of the things you have done, this person still love you, but you want this thing to release and the ancestors and spirit guides is telling you that this needs to be released. But this is going to be the killer part is what's at the bottom of the deck, which is what you don't see coming. What you don't see coming is they're going to end up being a public with the six of wands, there's going to end up being a, a public pain, public pain with this um, with this couple. This is going to end up being something so big that it's going to end up getting on social media. This is going to be so big that it's going to end up getting the friend groups. This is going to be so big that families is going to intervene and um, end up breaking y'all up. You know, this is going to end up being huge because this person that's doing this magic is not letting you go. Um, and so the only way out of this, like it's going to buckle your seatbelt because this is about to be really huge. Like some big is about to come out and this could be like y'all could get into a full blown fist fight at the club and it's going to be huge. Something huge is getting ready to happen. Um, and this is going to end up being a binding spell gone wrong because it's, it's going to end up being public humiliation for one of you, if not both of you, this is gonna end up being public humiliation that you guys are about to embarrass yourself like crazy. Um, you do have the Three of Cups at the bottom, um, at under this, which means that this is magic being done, this is a coven, and you do have the Three of Wands, which is saying that you knew this, you knew, you foreseen this, and you do have the Ten of Pentacles, which is saying that the Ten of Pentacles is safety and security. This could be coming from your own home, which you already know. I mean, I, I didn't even have to say that because you know your partner is doing this to you. But when it's saying, uh, it could be another family member as well. It could be a family member working in on this. You do have the um, the chariot card, which the chariot card can represent um, marriage or a very strong commitment, and you have it under an illusion. This was nothing but an illusion. This was nothing but magic. Um, you you got to be learned. Somebody spirit is saying you need to take people at their words. When people tell you stuff like that, like if you you get up in this, I'm telling you now, you get up in this, you never gonna be able to leave. I'm gonna end up, you know, putting you under a binding spell. Take them at their word, and just know that if you dive up in that, that you really are gonna end up being bound. And just know that whether you believe in magic or not, you can be bound. Just know that it is powerful and it always takes something extreme in order to break up a binding spell that, you know, because it normally for a binding spell, if you can't move away internal, something external must come and open the cage. And normally it's always something embarrassing, like the cops is going to be called, that it's going to be restraining orders, the cops is going to say you can't go over there, that there's going to be perimeters and stuff set in place that even if you want to, you can't. And that's what's going to end up diffusing this magic. This is a binding spell gone wrong. This is uh, somebody, ooh, somebody bound this, uh, this person, yep. You know, you, you got pain. So it's saying that there's going to end up being a very public, you know, humiliation. There's going to be public pain between you two. Uh, someone feel that this is their soulmate commitment, that they want to marry you if they're not already. And they're thinking of memories of you. But at the end of the day, they're conflicted as well. But they still see you as their past partner. So... This like this person is in love. This person is definitely in love with you. But what they got to understand is that you're no longer in love. And that's the thing that matters. The only way a relationship can work is when two people feel the exact same way. You can't force this. You can only manipulate what is already there. That's why a love spell wouldn't even be beneficial in this because you can give this person a love spell all day and it's not going to work because this whoever this reading is for, you don't even love this person. But a binding spell will work because that's exactly what you're doing, that you have bound this person. Who you have bound this person. I hope you, I mean, you know, and then especially like with you, it's like, that's what I keep telling people. You know, you know you're under spell. You know this work and stuff being done on you. A wish has been fulfilled that they led you to the right person, but you're second guessing it. 
And like, and now in order for this to get like, this is about to be real nasty in order for this thing in order to be solved because you're not listening to your intuition or how to get out. This person is so head over heels in love that they just want to trap you. This is a mess.